Today we are going to talk about the concepts related with the ventilation, pulmonary ventilation and pulmonary perfusion and ventilation perfusion ratio, normal and defects of ventilation perfusion ratio. Now, first of all we will talk about the ventilation, then we will talk about perfusion and after that we will develop their ratio and then we will see why it is so important to understand the concept of ventilation perfusion ratio. Look, all of you know that ventilation, pulmonary ventilation means that amount of air which is coming to the alveoli for the purpose of gas exchange, right? What is ventilation? Pulmonary ventilation means amount of air which is coming to the lungs, right, for the purpose of gas exchange, right? That is called alveolar ventilation. That part of the air which really goes to alveoli, right, that is called alveolar ventilation. Uh, first we will see that uh, alveolar ventilation in a person's lung who is standing upright like me. If a person is standing like this, right, upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung and lower part of the lung may have slightly, slight variations in ventilation. Let's see what are those variations. Let's suppose here is one lung. And of course, you must be knowing that lung is covered by, yes, pleura peritoneum. Oh, you have lung in abdominal cavity. Right? Now, what really happens that This is suppose hypothetical diagram. This uh, part, these alveoli represent the upper zone of the lung. This alveolar system is representing the middle zone of the lung and this part of the alveolar system is representing the basal part of the lung or the lower zone of the lung. So in a up person who is standing upright, lung can be divided into upper zone, middle zone and lower zone or simply we can call it apex of the lungs middle part of the lung and basal part of the lung, right? Now we talk about the ventilation. Ventilation means the air, alveolar ventilation means the air which is going to alveoli of the lung, right, for the purpose of gas exchange. Is that right? Now, what do you think? Ventilation is more in upper part of the lung or the lower part of the lung, no. normally, the person Okay, one is saying upper, one is saying lower. Okay, no, not like this, hold on. My question is, people who believe that ventilation is better in upper part of the lung raise their hand. I'm asking that anyone believes that ventilation in a normal person who is standing upright, he has better ventilation in upper part of lung. No one agrees. People who believe it is better in the lower part of the lung. That's good, very good. Why it is more in the lower part of the lung and why it is less in the upper part of the lung? That is the question. It is right that ventilation is progressively increasing as you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung, right? Now the question is that, that why ventilation in lower part of the lung is more and upper part of the lung is less, right? Gravity, gravity. you mean gravity is pulling the air down? No. If life was that simple, then you will pass every test without giving it, yes. Yeah, there is something related with intrapleural pressure which help in expansion of the lungs. Actually look, uh, when we talk about the expansion concept of the lung, let's suppose this is a rubber band. This is a rubber band and these are the holes in that. These holes are supposed just like that take this rubber band as a piece of lung, it's a piece of slice of lung. And these holes are just like alveoli, right? What really happens, when you expand the lung, alveoli will stretch out and more air should go. Is that right? Now, what is the force which really expands the lung? The force is intrapleural pressure, negative intrapleural pressure. When chest, during inspiration, when just chest cavity expands, intrapleural pressure becomes more. And this is the intrapleural pressure which expands the lungs. Now, listen. What is the intrapleural pressure in this area at the end of inspiration? It is about minus 10, right? 
what centimeter of water water here it it is about minus 5 right and here it is less suppose minus 2.5 right centimeter of water right now what really happens that at these negative pressures gravity plays a role as well normally what happens that in a normal person who is standing upright because there's negative more negative pressure here there's less negative pressure here it is simply because of gravity why listen this part of the lung upper part of the lung is sticky with this layer of pleura you know this layer of pleura now gravity is pulling the lung downward in a standing person gravity is pulling lung downward and chest cavity is trying to expand so naturally pressure here will be less or more there will be more opposed to that if you look at the pressure here even though diaphragm is pulling it down but because lung has its own weight due to gravity it is still settling on that so pressure here will be less again listen i will make a very simple example we take a rubber like this this is a rubber right and this is a very heavy rubber now if i pull it on both sides the more pull on the rubber will be at upper area you know why number one my upper hand is pulling the rubber number two gravity is pulling the rubber downward so this area will stretch more but when you come to the lower part of the rubber band right i'm pulling it downward but gravity is also pulling it downward the holes in that will open more or less they will be open less is that right again let's make this concept this is a rubber vertical these are the holes these are upper part of the lungs force this is middle part of the lung it is lower part of the lung now listen carefully gravity is pulling all part downward is that right now when i'm pulling it like this maximum stretches in the upper part because this upper zone is pulled upward as well as it is pulled downward by all the weight so actually these normally these alveoli which are in upper zone are normally very much large but when you took at the alveoli as you come down they become smaller and in the basal part they are really small you know why because they are not so much stretched why because uh, you little bit stretch downward but at the top because there is a weight of upper part of the lung on this part so do you think they will be stretched much they won't be so the first concept which you have to make about the ventilation is the sizes of the alveoli in the lung right now in my lung right now alveoli in upper part of the lungs are larger middle part are slightly smaller lower part of the lung basal part are the smallest alveoli am i clear now another concept if in this part of the lung alveoli are already stretched to stretch them further is difficult and this part of the lung alveoli are not much stretched so to further stretch is easy and stretchability of lung is explained by which term compliance, compliance. compliance mean what is compliance compliance mean stretchability of the lung compliance mean stretchability of lung now you divide this lung in three part upper middle and lower now listen already you know that right now in this lung in apical zone alveoli are larger in middle zone they are smaller and in the basal zone they are smallest anyone who could not understand this you are clear about it why it is so now now you stretch it for full inspiration what do you think after this thing when you stretch it for full inspiration uh, further increase in size will be seen in upper alveoli or lower alveoli in the lower ones is that right why because when you further increase because they are already distended enough they cannot be further distended it means they are now due to their previous distension they are stiffened and they are not stretchable so we see upper part of the lung in a person who is standing upright upper part of the lung is less compliant less stretchable it is more stiff 
Is that right? Lower part of the lung, alveoli are smaller, and if you really take a deep inspiration, alveoli and lower part will open better. Am I clear to you? Is that right? Now let me repeat what I have said up to now. We were talking about the ventilation concept in different part of the lung. In a person who is standing up, right, the alveolar size in upper part of the lung, middle part of the lung and lower part of the lung is significantly influenced by the gravitational forces, right. What really happens that when you are standing upright, intrapleural pressure is maximum negative in upper part, minimum negative in lower part, maximum negative in upper part, minimum negative in lower part when you are standing upright and due to this maximum negative uh, upper part is being pulled upward significantly and due to the weight of the lung it is also being pulled downward significantly due to excessive forces working on this alveoli in upper part of the lung are normally larger than the alveoli in the lower part of the lung is that right now such lung when you do full force for inspiration you are trying to stretch further because this part is already stretched it cannot be stretched further much but because this was less stretched so with effort it can be stretched further it means in a person who is standing upright upper part of the lung is less compliant and lower part of the lung is more stretchable or more compliant now the real question when you are doing inspiration in upright position now my question is Ventilation is more in upper zone or low, uh, lower zone? Who will answer me? <coughs> yeah. Okay, there is Mr. Adris here. After all this discussion, he deducted, he deduced that ventilation in upper part of the lung is more. Number one thing, he is wrong. And number two, he put a burden on me, I should explain why he is wrong. Is that right? Listen now. Look. Uh, this is not the size of alveoli which determine the ventilation. Size, this is a very important concept, very basic concept in lung. You may have a very big alveolus, but if it is not changing the size, do you think air is going in and out? No. no. So is it really ventilating? No. Because that is why in many diseases, alveoli become very big, but they are not changing their size. If alveolus is big, it means it has extra air. It has more air, but ventilation does not mean the amount of air in lung, my friend. Ventilation does not mean amount of air in the lung. Ventilation means amount of air which is exchanging in the lung every minute. You are getting it? Let, let's suppose I tell you something that you have a container and there is no air going in and out and very big container. Do you think it is being ventilated? No, but if you have a small container, but air is going in and out, it is ventilated. Now you are clear? So what really happens, these are very large, these are very large alveoli in upper zone. Is that right? But when you stretch it further for inspiratory purpose, they cannot be stretched further. So they will stretch very little. So during inspiration they will receive the air very little. They will receive the fresh air very little. That is the right word. They have the air, but during inspiration they will receive fresh air very little. Now come to this. These are small, but when you do inspiration, they are stretchable. So when they stretch from very small size, they become very big. So fresh air is more going to upper part or lower part? Lower part. So this is a very basic concept. It is not the sizes of alveoli which are important. It is the change in the size of alveoli which determines what is the true ventilation. Am I right? So today onward, when we will talk about ventilation concept, I am not teaching you really whole ventilation. That will be different lecture. I am just preparing the base for ventilation for few and ratios. Now listen. In a person like me standing, breathing, inspiration, expiration, air is going in and out more air is visiting in upper part of the lungs or more air is visiting the lower part of the lung? Lower part of the lung. Where the alveoli were smaller in the beginning of inspiration, with inspiration they can be stretched significantly and enough air can be diverted there. In upper part of the lung, ventilation is less. Why? 
because even before inspiration, alveoli and upper part of the lung were larger. So when you did inspiratory effort, they were already large enough that they could not be stretched much. They were not so compliant. They were not so stretchable. So with inspiratory effort, they enlarge very little. So fresh air is exchanged with upper alveoli in a little amount. Right? So I will just sum it up. In a person who is standing up, when he is doing inspiration and expiration, uh, ventilation progressively increases as you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung. Everyone understand this single sentence? All this discussion was just to explain single sentence that in a person who is standing up due to gravitational effect upper part of the lung is already stretched much lower part of the lung is stretched minimum. So during inspiration in an upright person upper part of the lung is further stretched very later, the lower part of the lung is further stretched significantly. So during standing position in a healthy person, right, ventilation in upper part of the lung is less, lower part of the lung is more or as you move from upper part of the lung downward, there is progressive increase in ventilation. Is it claro? Okay. Now we come to the concept of perfusion and then we'll put the perfusion and ventilation together we'll make one more long talk about perfusion right okay there you have a beautiful lung do you think lungs are also less beautiful and more beautiful Our beauty is only concerned with the things which you can see i don't want to comment on these delicate issues Look, this is the blood supply. Of course, when blood is a perfusion, now we are going to talk about perfusion to the lung. Is that right? Now, perfusion, uh, let's suppose we make it three areas. This is perfusion going to the upper part of the lung, or zone one. This is perfusion which is going to the middle zone. And this is perfusion which is going to the, yes, please. Yes, lower zone. Okay, and here should be, of course, air pockets, isn't it? Now, the point which you have to understand here clearly is that this diagram is wrong here. This is the point to be understood. Here, it should become red because it is oxygenated, isn't it? So this is one point to be understood. Now listen carefully. I have drawn basically apical part, middle part and lower part. Right? Now we'll talk about perfusion. Do you, what do you think? What about perfusion? As you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of a lung in a person who is standing upright, perfusion is increasing or decreasing? From, as you move from up to down, perfusion is increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Perfusion is increasing. Thank God. <laughs> Everyone answered right. Of course, if you have a pipe of water, it's just so simple. You have a pipe of water, one tube going up, one in the middle, one tube going down. Of course, water will be minimum going up and maximum going down because, again, gravitational effect that gravity will be antagonizing the flow to the upper zone and assisting the flow to the lower zone. So this is one very simple explanation that uh, perfusion, that is the blood flow in upper part of the lung in an upright person is less and perfusion in lower part of the lung is more. This is one reason. There's other reason also. What is that? This is one reason. Okay, I will explain it a little more detail. One thing you already know, right? That when blood is going to upper part, right? Heart has to generate a pressure. What is the pressure, systolic by diastolic, in the pulmonary artery? Please, anyone, 13 by 8, something like this, or 25 by... What is the systolic pressure here? No, that is the average. What is the systolic pressure in the right heart? Left heart is 125. It is 25. 
And what is the minimum diastolic pressure here? Diastolic pressure is about 8, right? As in the left heart, it is 120 by 80. Right heart also produces a pressure in the fluctuating pressure in the pulmonary arteries. Now, what really happens that it means the pressure in this area increases and decreases. Average pressure is about 13 millimeter of mercury. Average pressure in what? Pulmonary arterial system, right? Now look. Actually, with the pressure of 13, blood starts going upward, but gravity is pulling it down. So it means that truly pressure here will be very less. But when blood is coming down, already heart is pushing the force of 13 millimeter of mercury, plus gravity is also pulling down, so blood flow in lower part of the lung will be coming with higher pressure. Is that right? So what we have seen, that even though heart, heart pushes the blood in pulmonary circuit in upper, middle and lower zone with the same force, but due to gravitational interplay, right, the perfusion pressures in upper zones are less, perfusion pressures in middle zone are more, and perfusion pressures in lower zones are maximum. Is that right? So first thing is perfusion pressures. You know, blood flow in any area depends on two things. Number one is blood is coming to any area depends on two. Number one, what is the pressure with which blood is being perfused? And number two, what is the resist resistance offered by vessels? What is the resistance offered by vessels? Now, perfusion pressure we know are less in upper zone and perfusion pressures are maximum in lower zone. Is that right? What about the resistance to the blood vessels? Blood vessels in upper zone are more resistant or blood vessels in lower zones are more resistant to the flow? Why? Why uh, upper zone is more resistant? Why there is more resistance to the blood flow through the upper zone? Listen, this is true that upper zone has double problem. Number one, blood is moving through upper zone with less pressure and number two, this less pressure has to face more resistance. Is that right? The question, you already know why pressure is less, right? Because gravity is antagonizing. But why the resistance is more? Very simple. You know, this part of the lung is normally more stretched. Is that right? In a standing person, I told you this part of the lung is more stretched and in a standing person, this part of the lung is yes. less stretched. Which part of the lung is more stretched? The capillaries passing through more stretched elastic tissue will be compressed more. It's very simple. Are you understanding it? For example, this is rubber band and these were your alveoli, right? And these were your vessels passing through this. Now listen, what really happens that basically because upper part of the lung is more stretched, when it will stretch, elastic tissue will stretch, it will basically compress the capillaries. Is that right? It opens the alveoli but compress the capillaries. So due to this reason, the resistance to flow is more here. But because this area is less stretched, the resistance to flow is less. This is one reason. There is one more reason also. Actually, there is some pressure here also. This is pressure due to what? Air. This is called alveolar pressure. There is alveolar pressure of gases. Actually, this alveolar pressure, of course, alveolus is not only one side. There should be alveoli on this side. There should be on this side. If alveolar pressure are more, then capillaries are pressed, compressed more. If alveolar pressures are less, then capillaries are compressed less. Now, you remember, upper part of the lung was more stretched, so it was having more air. Because upper part of the lung was having more air, these alveoli were bigger, isn't it? And these alveoli were smaller. When there are bigger alveoli, the capillaries in between the alveoli are more compressed. And when alveoli are smaller, the capillaries which are passing in between the alveoli will be less compressed. Am I clear or not? Yes. You really understand it? What do you understand? Then, uh, first, that alveoli in upper part of the lung are bigger. 
Number two fact, capillaries have to pass in between those alveoli. If alveoli are really bigger, right, then they compress the capillaries also. Is that right? In lower part of the lung, alveoli are smaller. So, capillaries are easily passing through the alveoli which are smaller. Am I clear? So, this fact that larger alveoli compressing the capillaries more in the upper part of the lung, right, it means resistance to blood flow is more. At the top, pressure for the flow is less. So, perfusion in the upper part of the lung is normally yes. less. But as you move lower from upper part to the lower part of the lung, is that right? Alveoli get progressively smaller. The so pressure of alveoli on the capillary system is less. And as you move from up to down, gravity start assisting the pressure. So pressure become more. So we can say simply, in the lung, when you are moving from upper part to the downward, right? Uh, perfusion pressure keep on increasing. Perfusion pressure keep on increasing and capillary compression keep on decreasing capillary compression keep on decreasing so due to increased perfusion pressure and less capillary compression perfusion is best seen in lower part of the lung is that clear now let's compare ventilation and perfusion about the perfusion we said that as you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung perfusion progressively increases and actually same is true about ventilation and perfusion. If you talk about ventilation, as you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung, ventilation progressively increases. And if you talk about the perfusion, as you move from upper part to the lower part of the lung, perfusion also progressively increases. Is that clear? No problem. But there is a delicate concept here. This is very simple statement. As you as a person is standing upright, as you move from apical part to the basal part of the lung, ventilation will progressively increase and of course perfusion will also progressively increase. Is that right? This is a simple concept. But actually, in fact, when you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung, now I'm making the real statement. As you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung, uh, there's slight increase in ventilation and the significant increase in perfusion. Both increase, but what increases more? Perfusion. That is the point to remember. As you move from upper part of the lung downward, there is slight increase in ventilation, but there is much more increase in perfusion. This statement will be clear in your mind. Now we come to the ventilation perfusion ratio. First I will talk about that simple ratio and then I will apply it to, what do you think? How much is the normally a person who is standing upright and healthy person, how much ventil alveolar ventilation is there? You know what is meant by alveolar ventilation? That how much part of the ventilatory ear really goes to alveoli for the exchange purpose? What is minute ventilation? Who has the concept of minute ventilation? Minute ventilation is equal to tidal volume into, no, first simple minute ventilation into respiratory rate. Let's suppose your tidal volume is 500 ml. With every inspiration you take 500 ml in and your respiratory rate is 12. So your minute ventilation is 6000 ml. Is that right? Per minute of course. No, but all this 500 ml does not go to the, all of this 500 ml which you take in does not go to the physiological area, alveolar area for the exchange purpose. Listen now carefully. Let's suppose you give me you give me a bag in which I have to take inspiration. Let's suppose from the bag during one inspiration I take fresh air half liter in. So my tidal volume is half liter. But that fresh air which I have taken in, some of it will be going to the alveoli, up to the alveoli, and some of the last part of the air will be stuck into nose nasopharynx, oropharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, up to the terminal bronchioles. Terminal bronchiole is very important word. You know why? Because your conduction system which conduct the air, which does not allow the gas exchange, only take the air in, 
or bring the air out, this conduction system extends from your these nostril up to the terminal bronchial. After the terminal bronchial, there are respiratory bronchial and there are eventually there are you know alveolar sac and alveoli. All those areas allow gas exchange. But there is no gas exchange from the nostril, nose up to the terminal bronchial. So when you take the fresh air in, half liter air which you have taken in is filling from nostrils up to the uh, up to the alveoli. Out of that, 150 ml, out of 500 ml, 150 ml air is actually occupied in the or trapped in the nose and conductive pathway up to the terminal bronchioles. And this 150 ml, 150 ml, which is trapped into conductive part of respiratory system does not participate in gas exchange. Because this air does not uh, participate in gas exchange, we say for exchange purpose, this air is dead. So, this all area extending from your nose up to your terminal bronchiole, all this air which is trapped in this pathway, that is called trapped into anatomical dead space. Is it right? So, out of 500 ml fresh air, 150 ml is lost in anatomical dead space. So, truly how much air is going to the alveoli for exchange purpose? 350 ml. So, it means that tidal volume minus anatomical dead space is the true air which is going to alveoli, which is written to exchange areas, we can say gas exchange area, into respiratory rate. So, it is 500 ml minus 150 ml uh, into 12 respiratory rate. It is how much? 350 into 12. 4200 ml air. So, approximately 4 liter air, listen carefully, approximately 4 liter air go during every minute, about 4 liter air is being exchanged with that part of the respiratory system which participates in gas exchanges. Am I clear? So, this is true alveolar ventilation. What is that? This is alveolar ventilation. Am I clear? No problem. Now we come to perfusion. So actually, how much air is going into this area plus this area plus this area is about 4200 ml. Is that right? Every minute. This is ventilation. Now listen. We have to match the ventilation with the perfusion. Is that right? There should be air in this space, there should be blood in this space. And air should be also exchanging and blood should also be moving. And while they are on the move, they should exchange the gases here. That oxygen should jump from alveolar space to blood and of course carbon dioxide should jump from vascular space to the alveoli. Right? So, how much blood every minute is going to the both lungs? How much blood is pumped by the right heart into pulmonary artery? every minute about 5 liters about 5 liters so it means that approximately now listen that the air i'm presenting now whole lung in this air space and i'm presenting the whole cardiac output into this vascular space blood is moving like this is that right and air is of course coming like this and going back like that is that right now during one minute, how much air is moved from here? Approximately 4000 ml. Is that right? Ideally speaking, as a whole lung. And how much blood has moved from here? 5000 ml. This is, this 4000 ml is representing the ventilation. Right? And this 5000 ml of blood flow is representing perfusion. Is that right? And both of them should be presenting ventilation perfusion ratio. Why we talk about ratio? If you talk only about ventilation, it is not a clear concept. You talk about only perfusion, it is not clear concept. Listen, lungs are designed for gas exchange. Lungs are designed for which purpose mainly? For gas exchange. 
between the alveoli and the pulmonary capillaries, between the air spaces and the blood spaces. Now listen, if there are only air spaces and no blood space, do you think gas exchange is done? No. If there is only ventilation and no perfusion, do you think you can achieve any gas exchange? No. And if there is only perfusion and no ventilation, do you achieve any gas exchange? No. For a good gas exchange, lung which is an organ for the gas exchange, for a good gas exchange, there should be a reasonable ratio between the ventilatory activity and perfusion activity. In a healthy person, normally the ratio is 4000 by 4000 ml of air by 5000 ml of blood. How much it will become? 0 0.8. I, can you do it? Math yourself. So this is the normal ventilation perfusion ratio. This ratio is very important to maintain. Ventilation and perfusion should be matching each other. Ideally, it should be one to one. You know, as uh, you know, any other thing in the world which is one to one ratio. Joanne, you don't know anything in the world which is one to one ratio. James must be knowing. You know anything in the world which is one to one ratio and you want to match those things? Yeah, innocent, just two year old. No idea. Anyone knows something in the world? What happened? Your hormones are not working. Love is one to one. Okay. Okay, one doctor has come up with a novel idea. Right. He says for making love, men and women should be in ratio of at least one to one. Yes. Right? There should be at least one man and there should be at least one woman. That is men-woman ratio. <laughs> right? To have maximum number of couples, you should have ratio near one. One man, one woman, hundred men, hundred women, thousand men, thousand women. It's a very easy concept, isn't it? This is men-woman matching. Is that right? If, for example, there are 100 men and 10 million women, that is a terrible waste of women. Is that right? Men-women ratio is disturbed. In the same way, if there are only 100 women and 1 million men, I think horrible concept. If there are 100 women and 1 million men, this is a terrible waste of men and women both. Is that right? So what I want to say that for proper ratio, men and women should be in which ratio? 1 is to 1. Because they have to match, only then they function well then. In the same way, when you come to the lung, ventilation and perfusion, there has to be exchanges. Of course, here there is gas exchange. Ventilation perfusion ratio should be also 1. Is that right? If there is more air, there should be more blood. And if there is less air, there should be less blood. If there is ventilation is too much and blood flow is very less, it means air is wasted. And if blood flow is too much and air is very little, it means blood is wasted. Again, let me repeat it. In some unit of the lung, suppose this is one functional unit of the lung. If, if for example, air is very less and blood flow is very much, what is wasted? Perfusion is wasted. And if air is too much and blood flow is very less, what is wasted? Ventilation is wasted. In the nature, ventilation perfusion ratio is maintained near 1 in human beings in standing position, it is ideally around 0.8. Am I clear? Now, when there are significant defects in ventilation perfusion ratio, there are bigger problems. Is that right? Now, when I say there is ventilation perfusion ratio, that is 0.8, actually that is the ratio in the middle part. That is the ratio in the ventilation perfusion ratio in the middle part is near ideal. You can understand why. Is that right? But actually in upper part of the lung and lower part of the lung, there is some physiological ventilation perfusion ratio fluctuation. What do you think? In upper part of the lung, there is, okay, let me explain. I will make rather a new diagram for you and you have to tell me that ventilation perfusion ratio in the different parts of lungs in a healthy person first. Then we will come to pathological conditions. Uh, let's suppose here is your lung which is absolutely healthy lung, 
right? Mm, here is air pockets. I need to be made it. Let's suppose this is representative of air pocket. And here is, what is it? Pulmonary capillaries, they should not go out of lung, right? Which represent your perfusion. Is it right? Now, these three zones we will study upper zone, middle zone, and lower zone. We have already discussed that ventilation perfusion ratio, that air and blood, right? Ratio in the middle is 0.8, which is near the ideal. Is that right? What happens to ventilation perfusion in upper part and lower part, right? Listen, as you move from upper part to lower part, first ventilation. Ventilation keep on decreasing or increasing normally? Increase. Ventilation increases, right? For example, here if ventilation is plus 2, here it become plus 3, here it, okay, plus 4, here suppose it become plus 6. Is that right? This is the ventilation. As you move from upper part to the lower part of the lung, we see ventilation is increasing, right? Now we come to the perfusion. Perfusion in the middle is really matching well. Ventilation plus perfusion, right? In upper part of the lung, perfusion is less, least rather. And here it is too much. Now what we really say, that as you move from upper part to lower part of the lung, ventilation increases. And as you move from upper part of the lung to the lower part of the lung, perfusion also increases. But there is dramatic increase in perfusion and there is gradual increase in ventilation. Is that right? Am I clear? Now, do you think, is it near ideal in upper part? No, there is slight mismatch. Little bit air is wasted. Is that right? Even though ventilation is less in upper part, but perfusion is really very less. Right? Due to that reason, if you talk about ventilation perfusion ratio in upper part of the lung, is it more than 0.8 or less than 0.8? Who will tell? Ventilation is perfusion ratio is more than 0.8. I think it should be written like this. So, what does it mean? What is wasted? Ventilation is wasted. What is wasted there? Ventilation is wasted. Is that right? Now we come to the lower part of the lung. Right? Of course, ventilation has dramatically increased, uh, no, moderately increased. But perfusion has increased dramatically in lower part of the lung. So again, ventilation perfusion ratio in lower part of the lung is 0.8 or different than 0.8? More than 0.8 or less than 0.8? Less than 0.8. Should be like this. Does it now? If this is the standard, rather ideal, you know, ideal is found very little in the lung as well as in the world. Right. This ideal situation, ventilation perfusion ratio is 0.8 is seen only in the middle part of the lung in a person who is standing, right? In the upper part of the lung, ventilation perfusion ratio is more than 0.8. It means ventilation is more than the perfusion and some ventilation is extra. It means some air is not getting a, getting a chance to exchange well with the blood. And when you come to the lowermost part of the lung, what do you really see? Ventilation perfusion ratio is less than 8. Less than 8 means that perfume, even though ventilation in lower part of the lung is more than the upper part of the lung, but perfume is too much due to that. That reason, if you talk about the ratio, not absolute value, but ratio, ventilation perfume ratio is less than 8, what does it mean? There is wastage of perfume. Now, does it mean something practically? Let's talk about that. Let's suppose you put an analyzer here that Blood which is coming from these areas out, do some chemical analysis of blood. Right? First of all, you must know, I will study first of all this area. Right? Middle which is near ideal. When blood comes to the 
this area for exchange purpose what is the partial pressure of oxygen in that blood which is entering into pulmonary capillaries yes 40 what millimeter of mercury all of you know that oxygen partial pressure in the mixed venous blood is about 40 millimeter of mercury is that right and partial pressure of carbon dioxide which is entering here is 46 millimeter of mercury is that right now we apply the concept here what is the partial pressure of oxygen here about 100 millimeter of mercury is that right and what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide here normally yes i have taught you in the previous lectures 46 millimeter of mercury is that right now look first deal with oxygen and then deal with carbon dioxide when this blood is passing through this area oxygen pressure here is 40 and there in the alveolar space is 100 so what will happen oxygen will shift from alveoli to the capillaries so oxygen will shift over here and this shifting of oxygen will make partial pressure of oxygen here 100 it will keep on shifting until pressure equalizes in both areas is that right so it means when blood will come out from here what will be the partial pressure of oxygen here 100 millimeter of mercury is that right <coughs> now we come to carbon dioxide carbon dioxide which is entering there it has a pressure of 46 and sorry you have to correct it sorry this is pressure is 40 now carbon dioxide is coming to pulmonary capillary at the beginning of capillary carbon dioxide partial pressure is 46 millimeter of mercury as it is passing through this as partial pressure in the alveoli is less so carbon dioxide will move from pulmonary capillaries to the alveoli until pressure become equal so carbon dioxide pressure will be left here is 40 so in arterial blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 millimeter of mercury is that right no problem up to this now let's see what happens to this situation and what happens to this situation is that right here blood is less and air is more now you have to tell me what is the partial pressure of oxygen here 100 because this area is poorly ventilating you know this upper area is relatively poorly ventilating so carbon dioxide will be really washed away from there or somewhat will be retained there retained, retained. so partial pressure of carbon dioxide may be maybe yes partial pressure of carbon dioxide here is not uh, 40 it is 42 let's suppose what will be the effect on this thing that when carbon dioxide will come out from here partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be 42 it means there was efficient exchange or poor exchange poor exchange but oxygen will exchange well is that right equalizes well so it will be still partial pressure of oxygen 100 millimeter of mercury now we come to this area what's wrong here ventilation is perfume ratio is less than 0.8 if ventilation perfume ratio is less than 0.8 it means ventilation is less and perfusion is more it means some of the blood is not exchanging some blood is extra there's some blood extra so here again gas exchange will be uh, ideal or less than ideal less than ideal because air is less and blood is more there air was more and blood was less now in this case because blood supply is more so some of the blood will go without exchanges when some of the blood will go without exchanges it means that some oxygen will not be picked up and some carbon dioxide will not be eliminated so oxygen level here partial pressure of oxygen will be less than 100 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more than what 40 is that right 
and we have to correct that situation first listen what is happening here air is less and blood supply is more it means a little extra blood doesn't get matching with the air so that little extra blood will have the same gas exchanges which were coming from right side of the heart right low oxygen and high carbon dioxide so that will mix with the remaining blood and oxygen will become less than ideal situation and carbon dioxide will be more than ideal situation is there any question here are you clear you are looking confused a little bit if you are not clear you can ask me what is not clear you are getting it what about you I think you people are looking tired, tired. isn't it? Ventilation preference ratio in the brain is also disturbed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I will just give you a break. Uh, just one minute. Again, this is the ideal situation, and the results are also ideal. Ideal results are that when uh, blood is leaving the capillaries of pulmonary system, oxygen is should be 100 and carbon dioxide should be 40. Is that right? But in those situations where ventilation perfume ratio is not near ideal, it means either air, uh, air is not getting blood completely or blood is not getting air completely. That will produce a slight deviation in ventilation perfume ratio from ideal ratio. And that may slightly impair the gas exchange. That is what I wanted to say. Right? Let's have a break here and then we'll continue.